This year, 2016, is the 350th anniversary of the arrival of Jean-Marc Briere in North America. In 1666, Jean-Marc Briere arrived in New France. He was my seventh great-grandfather. Most likely he was born in 1642 and was 24 years old when he arrived in New France. He was sponsored by a recruitment agent who would bring young men with certain skill sets to the New World. In return, these young men would work for three years to pay for their voyage. What skills did Jean-Marc bring to New France? Why he was a baker? Perhaps New France was in need of someone with culinary skills or maybe they just needed a good croissant. It's unlikely though, as the croissant wasn't invented until 1839. According to the Oxford University Press Dictionary of American Family Names, the surname Briere is from an old French dialect and refers to the heather plant. If you're thinking that's not very glamorous, being named after a plant, take heart. The name also refers to a large area just north of the Loire River Delta in Normandy, France. Parts of the Briere encompasses the 190 square miles of the Briere Regional Natural Park. This is the area where the Briere name originated from. In fact, if you are from this area, you would be referred to as a Briarean. There are more than a dozen different variants of the surname Briere. In 1666, the year Jean-Marc arrived in New France, we see his name on the household census for the family of Nicholas Leroy, who was Jean-Marc's sponsor. They lived in Montmorency County near the falls of Bouchetel. From the 1666 census, we see that Jean-Marc is 24 years old. He's a boulanger, or baker, and he is engaged, which means he signed a contract to work for three years for his passage to New France. A year later, another census has Jean-Marc living with Nicolas Leroy's father-in-law on Elle d'Orleans at saint Famille. Interestingly, Nicolas Leroy is also a direct ancestor of ours that we will talk about later. Every summer there were more ships arriving with Fille de Wa. And there was not a lot of lady here in the colony, you count. Well, let's say one woman for every seven men and one out of two of those women were uh, a nun. So it's not really good on the family, you can't understand that. So what the king did is that he proposed to supply the duck for all those girls uh, that would want to come here. Uh, several of these would come from orphanage. 763 Fille de Wa arrived in New France between 1663 and 1673. In 1671, Jean Grandin, born in France to Antoine Grandin and Jean Bonnel, arrived. Jean-Marc had likely just finished paying off his passage to the New World and had no house or land as far as we know. The Fille de Wa were free to choose their own husbands. They tended to look for suitors who owned property and could provide sustenance. As there were approximately seven men for each woman in New France, one wonders why Jean Grandin chose Jean-Marc. Other than culinary skills, Jean-Marc didn't have much in terms of wealth or status. But that's not the case for Jean Grandin. She'd been given a dowry of 350 livres, a pair of chickens and pigs, an ox, a cow, two barrels of salted meat, and a gift of 50 livres from King Louis XIV. She was likely a hard-working woman. She was, after all, a country girl. It would be highly unlikely that Jean-Marc was the only suitor pursuing her. What was it that won her over? Was Jean-Marc better looking than the competition? Or was Jean just looking for a man who was handy in the kitchen? On October 19, 1671, Jean-Marc Briere and Jean Grandin were married here in the Church of Notre Dame. They went on to have nine children, including Charles Briere, from whom Roland is descended.
After the wedding, they moved to Lange Gardien, just east of Quebec City. According to their marriage certificate, Jean-Marc and Jen were living in Lange Gardien at the time of their marriage in 1671. There's no mention of a homestead in any of the records. We also don't know where they lived in Lange Guardian. But we do know that in 1676, my direct ancestor, Charles Briere, along with his twin sister, Anne, was born here in the Guardian Angel. We are traveling east from Lange Guardian to Quebec City on Avenue Royale. In the 1600s, it was known as Chemin de Roi, the Royal Road. In 1679, Jean-Marc and Jeanne Briere traveled this road to Nouvelle and eventually to Point, that place on the screen that I can't pronounce, right there. It translates Point of Squirrels. That's correct, that's what I said. In 1679, Jean and Jean Briere settled into the Signori of Bel Air, also known as Point of Squirrels, under Jean Toupin. In the text of Eugene de Sous, La Toupin de Sous, Jean Marc is mentioned as having three arpents or 80 acres of land. We know that Jean Marc moved there in 1679, so he would have been one of the first three permanent settlers in Fief de Bel Air, mentioned in 1681, the first in the northern section. In this map of the Signori de Bel Air in 1672, we can see that it is divided into two sections, north and south. The domain seigneurial strip in the southern half is where Jean Toupin lived. You can see roads designated by dotted lines, one that run east to west, the Royal Road, and the other is Colony Road. What really helped us narrow down the possible location of the homestead was overlaying the 1672 map on a satellite image of the area. The 1672 map isn't perfect, but it is surprising how closely it lines up with the satellite image. The fact that John Mark was the first settler in the northern section, he was probably on the side of Colony Road. In 1679, John Mark moved from the guardian angel to here. Charles Breer, John Mark's son, was my seventh great grandfather. He also lived here next to his father. Finally, after eight years, Jeanne gets a home of her own. She never got the granite countertop she wanted, but she always had a fresh croissant. After a life of pioneering and farming, on December 3, 1706, Jean-Marc Briere, at 64 years of age, passed away in his own home. Jean-Baptiste Briere, his firstborn son, died on the same day as his father. Jean Grandon's father, Antoine Grandon, moved to New France in 1690. His wife, Jean Fournel, had passed away years before. Jean Grandon Briere was his only child, and he passed away on the same day as his daughter, on March 27, 1712, at the family homestead. He was 92 years old, and Jean was 72. Jean-Marc and Jeanne Briere are buried here in Nouvelle. This was the closest parish to the Point of Squirrels, and the original pioneers were buried near here, but in 1934, the local overseers of the Catholic Church had the remains removed from the pioneer graveyard to this location, depositing them in a mass grave with no headstone. They claimed it was for sanitary purposes. According to local historian Jean-Claude Rochette, the real reason the Catholic Church had moved the Pioneer Graveyard was so a road could be built to bring material down from the hills to rebuild a wharf that had washed out in the 1920s. Today, a tennis court covers the original graveyard. It is a little sad when you think about it. Here are these Pioneer families. They fought the Indians. They fought the English. They carved the nation out of the wilderness to be disrespected in such a way. One small consolation is the fact that a plaque has been erected near the original Pioneer Graveyard that honors Jean Briere and Jeanne Grandin as the original pioneers of the area. <laughs>